the candidate for pastor, the candidate for evangelist, and then the candidate for ministerial position. Let all candidates be on their seat. We are starting the next couple of minutes. Thank you. Shana Rana Nishana Shana Mana Namaya Nasaka Dibi Dipa Dya Duta Kandya Dabasha I'll put you in front in front of my melody, you are all that matters. You are all that matters. I'll make room for two. You and I, Jesus. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. Oh, you are all that matters. Oh, hey, oh, hey. you are all that matters. Oh, hey, oh, hey. you are all that matters. Nanya mana sasa.
ministers to you tonight, can you lift up those hands and speak in other tongues and blast in other tongues as you worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one who made all things new, the one who made it possible for us to be here today. Jesus! Hallelujah. Can we bow down our hearts as we pray and leave this meeting before the creator of heaven and the heart? Most holy God, we want to say thank you so much. It's been a journey and we are happy and grateful to keep us through the journey, culminating into an ordination service. Thank you for the resources you made available, for the training, the discipline, for all that you have put together to make men out of this, your servants. Thank you for fulfilling your counsel to bring today to pass. Thank you for the organization, Harvest Point Ministry, who have been the platform for this training. We are grateful for the network of ministers organization coming to perform this. Thank you for joining Mercies. In spite of the weather, you still prove yourself to be God. We return all the glory to you, all the honor to you, all the adoration to you. As we gather, Father, in your presence, let it please you that there will be a fresh release of your spirit to take over the whole program. From beginning to the end, let your name be exalted. Father, we thank you because at the end of this meeting, this glory will be returned back to you. Blessings unto your people and to expansion to your kingdom. Dear Holy Spirit, take over and let your name be praised forevermore. In Jesus' most holy name, we have prayed. And amen. You're welcome to this program. It is time to have a brief worship section. Well, I'll follow my sister, Mrs. Bimba Ajay. Praise the Lord. Let's all rise on our feet as we worship the King of glory, the ancient of days, the I am that I am. It's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. 
is the one that make it possible for us to be here today is not by our power nor by our might it's only by his grace and mercy let's lift up our hands and worship the king of glory let's worship the ancient of days in Jesus name as we continue daddy go with us in Jesus name and at the end of everything we are focused to glorify your name in heaven in Jesus most wonderful name we have worship important day like this and we are blessed because ordinarily such ordination is either 
done virtually or it is done in the, at the office. But we are blessed because the ordination, we have the privilege of having it held in our premises. Praise the Lord. Not only that, we have the presence of the highest body in the organization of Commission Ministers Network. We have in our midst the president. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The president is in our midst. We have also his wife with him. And we have the executive director of the commission. He was the only one I thought was coming. And as the Lord will have it, uh, the president and his wife had administration around our location. They said, look, let, let us come and witness the auction. Aren't we blessed? Yeah. Glory be to God. It is my honor and pleasure to introduce Mr. and Mrs. Helm, the president of Commission Ministers Network. While we humbly request them to rise to their feet, as usual with us, we're going to shout three hallelujah to welcome them. You're welcome. Three hallelujah. 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 You're welcome, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. And of course, we have in our midst the executive director of Commission Ministers Network, Mr. Michael Cave. Mr. Cave. Let's shout three hallelujah to welcome you also. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. And we prefer hallelujah to hand clap. Hand clap is okay. But when you shout hallelujah, you are further uh, praising the Lord. The, programs, the program of the day is going to be straight to the point. We have those who have been tested and they have the, the call is clear from God. Uh, no one calls anybody into ministry. It is for us to identify their gift and give them the required skills to carry out what the Lord has called them into the world to do. Therefore, I want to formally introduce them. And then, of course, before them, we have guest ministers among us who are also participants in this program. Uh, we're expecting some more. We have in our midst, our friend and brother, uh, the friend of the ministry, the brother of the ministry, and part of us, Pastor Tunde Ola Dunjoye. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And of course, we have also Pastor Daniel Awolo in our midst. Pastor Awolo. Praise the Lord. And we have our family members here as part of the program. We welcome you all. If there, if there any minister, any pastor here present, please rise to your feet for recognition. Any pastor in our midst? Okay. Uh, we are here physically present in the program, and the program is aired too. We are on Zoom. So if you want any family member to be part of the program, see the media department for information on how to connect, but we've passed information around already. Praise the Lord. Today, God has blessed this ministry and we are going to ordain a total of 24 ministers. 24 ministers. It is our first ordination in this ministry. And of course, we are blessed that the number of uh, past ministers to be ordained uh, is as much as 24. That's a great blessing indeed. Praise the Lord. When this ordination program was to was uh, slated, 
the executive of Harvest Point Ministry thought about it deeply. And we thought we can ordain. Harvest Point Ministry can ordain. However, if we go ahead and ordain and issue our certificates, the certificate will only be valid within areas uh, where Harvest Point is known. And that is probably here, Republic of Benin, Nigeria, and most recently, Uganda, Tanzania, Senegal, Mexico, and Brazil. But if we allow an organization like Commission Ministers Network to ordain our ministers, they have a universal coverage with your ordination certificate and your identity. You go to Ghana, there are some pastors in Ghana who were ordained by this commission. By implication, you are brothers. So, and we took our time, we studied how many of these organizations go about with this ordination. We studied them very well before we decided to go along with a commission minister's network. This probably Mr. Cave and Mr. Mal may probably be hearing for the first time. We did due diligence before our choice of your uh, commission. So I am going to mention the names, introduce those who are to be ordained today. And while, while I was talking, one of the pastors who were expected in this program who came, apostle in the body of Christ, Samuel Keshiro. Let's welcome into our midst with the hallelujah. Apostle Keshiro, you're welcome. Thank you. We have on the list of those to be ordained as ministers. As I call your name, just rise up quickly for recognition and then because we want to make it snappy and live here as uh, not more than one and have us maximum. We have Mr. Emmanuel Olawale Ajayi for the position to be ordained as minister. Emmanuel Ajayi, praise the Lord. Solomon Ola Toyi Adibayo. Hallelujah. Mrs. Simisade Adewi Abiola. Amen. Emmanuel Ebeniza Adeni Pekum. Adekemi Adenusi. Fola Sheun Ajayi. Titi Layo Afolabi. Grace Bamboshe. Ade Yemi Yusuf, Joel Faremi, Olushola Odekule, Richard Kai Ode Komolafe. Amen. To the Office of Evangelist, Clara Adiremi Odeneye. Nancy Yinka Akito. Adiola Daji. Occasions like this give me the opportunity to call people without any prefix. Um, I hope you bear with me. Those who are Mrs. Are, those who are Dickens and elders, you're going to take a new title today, so I reserve your old title. Bear with me. Of course, the next one is Adenike Okwade. Olanike Aku. Olanike. Omolara Adewumi. Stella Faleye. Antonia Fabi. Deborah Alofe. Yemisi Kola Wale, Beatrice Babalola, and to the office of pastor, Timothy Oluwa Sheun Awe, Amen. 
this is how the program is going to go. We're going to read through the charges and they will respond. After that, we're going to anoint them. And then we will read through the responsibilities expected of them as ministers, evangelists, and pastors. Then they will respond. And then we'll get the president of Commission Ministers Network to pray for them. And Mr. Cave to will pray for them. And then we'll hear the word of God. We will call them out to receive their certificate and their ID. And there's a gift we have prepared for them, a Bible for them in English and Yoruba, and it is customized. They have their names on it. So we're going to call them out to give them after they have heard the word of God. Uh, then we will, after the word of God, we'll call them to give them their certificate. We don't want to lump the whole thing together. Ordination first, you get your anointing, sit down, listen to the responsibility that follows the anointing. And then we'll, you hear the word of God, then you can come out for your certificate and the gift. And thank God we have executive of the commission here. They are going to give out the certificates. And then uh, the, the Bible gift, you receive them from, from me. You collect your certificate, collect your Bible, take your seat. Amen. Praise the Lord. I've mentioned the name of all ordinance, so we're not going to repeat it. Uh, what I want you to please listen carefully to this charge. After due diligence and prayers, we've been directed by the Lord to ordain you as minister, evangelist, and pastors, as the case may be, by the authority of Commission Ministers Network. We ask you in the presence of God and all people here present, your preparedness in accepting the office by accepting to adhere to the following covenant conduct. Please listen to it carefully. Uh, at any point you have the liberty to withdraw. Number one, believing that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit and that you covenant to order your life in accordance with God's standard of moral purity. Number two, to remain faithful in your marriage vow. Number three, remain free from bondage of any addictive substance or ungodly activity. Four, to seek to manifest the fruits of the spirit in all actions and endeavors. Deal honestly with everybody. Work so you may give to others. Number five, raising your family to reflect Christ's love and care for his church and covenant to strive to keep your family in biblical order. Provide for your family spiritually and physically. Number six, guide your tongue. Praise the Lord. And the response I want because of time, I want you to rise to your feet and respond in the presence of everyone here and God in our presence that you are ready to adhere to this conduct. May God help you. Ordinarily, we would have given the microphone to you one by one, but I believe that no one is going to murmur. <laughs> You're not going to murmur. You say it openly that you agree to adhere to this conduct. May God help you. Are you ready? Now let's go.
Amen. Please, you may be seated. Before we anoint you formally, uh, I will want to change the program a bit. I want to request that the president of the commission pray for you before you receive the anointing. So I will humbly request him to come forward and pray for you before you receive the anointing. This is such an important time as, as has already been said, no one, no person, no organization can make you a minister. You've simply responded to the call of God on your lives. He's the one who's done that. And this is his work and you're following his call. And so all the enablement that you need comes from him and the Holy Spirit who dwells within you. And so let's go to him right now in prayer and thank him first of all for the amazing privilege that he would allow us to be a servant of his people and to represent him as ambassadors here in this earth, here on this world. Lord Jesus, we come before you tonight humbly aware of the fact, Lord, that in us there dwells no good thing other than the fact that your Holy Spirit has come within us and made us your children. And now, Lord, you have, you have called us and given us a tremendous privilege to represent you, Lord, in these various ministries, as pastor, as evangelist, as God, your, the call of your, uh, of your Holy Spirit is so evident in our hearts and lives. And God, we respond to that call now, Lord, and Father, the, the uh, uh, agreements that we have made now and that we agree to adhere to, Lord, are possible by the power of your Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, we just acknowledge right now that we are dependent upon your Holy Spirit for all of these things. And Lord, I just pray right now for each and every one of these individuals that your anointing would be fresh upon them, Lord, that God, when they come to the end of themselves, that they would realize that that's the place that your power begins, that you're made strong in their weakness, Lord. And Father, that in each and every moment, each and every day, as they go to represent you, that they would be totally dependent upon the power and the empowering of your Holy Spirit to make God things possible beyond what they're able to do in their own strength, Lord. May we never operate in our own strength but may it not by, be, not by might, not by our power, not by our wisdom, but by your spirit, may it all be accomplished. And Lord, right now, we as uh, ministers of your gospel, God, commit these new ones to you and to your keeping and to your direction. And thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit that is going to be very evident and very manifested in their ministries from this day forward, just as the Spirit of God came upon David at the anointing that came upon him, Lord. May the Spirit of the Lord come upon each and every one of these in a power and in a might, Lord, that would enable them to come up against every single Goliath that would be thrown in their way, Lord, that they might become more than conquerors, more than overcomers through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, working through them to accomplish great things to bring honor and glory to you, and your name alone, in the holy name of our Lord, Savior, Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You may be seated. This is how we're going to go about it. As you come out in the other, just as you're seated, I will anoint you. And the executive members of the commission will stand in here. After receiving the anointing, they will congratulate you and you go back to your seat. And then we'll go to the next program. We want to make it snappy, we want to make it as quick as possible because they've got some other uh, administration to uh, do. And we thank God for what the Lord is doing in our midst. So while you're defiling out to receive the anointing, we will we'll request our sister uh, Bimbo. Is she here? Okay, to give us some soft music at the background, worship the Lord, worship the Lord. The thing about it is that you are at liberty to sing in your native language. They are aware that we worship in our native language. So you can do your worship in, the, in your language. You are allowed because the worship is all about him. The only audience is him. Amen. 
So while she is there singing to praise the Lord, let's be quick. quick and you know, take his speaking tongues. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, Mr. Sir Jobaro, oh yeah. So they will sing some worship songs and then please you may stand in here to congratulate them. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yes, the three of you stand in here. They will receive the anointing and they will receive a handshake here. Handshake. Thank you. Glory, glory, glory to the Lamb. We give you glory, glory. we give you glory, glory. That is one part of the program. I will, because of the unique nature of our ministry, I would like to request, I will request that uh, we pray in our native language. 
to bless the ordinance. I want to request Pastor Oladun Joey to pray in Yoruba, Yoruba language, to bless this ordinance. Ejagbadura. Olorun wa gbe yin ga yin logo. Oni mo ti mo lati nu iya re wa mo yan gege bi wole orile bi agbaye. O le awon to n ti mo. Lo n ti yan. Lo n si se logo. Ari pe fanfani to wa yinu aye awon mo yin. I find fake pay, cause anything pay, and you can alone think pay. Open it, penny shall I be your guy? Lord, you share and share you, Ulua, Bao Pewa. Gagabi, if you lolly there at it, Roro Lim one lorry. Ororo call it solu. O foy, dear Joji Jaddy. Until you shed it, tell it, tell it, over a sinning she. One eighty, I get. Se solu wa nu awon woli ni ami yato re ti ororo orun ba kan ori eda ororo kan ni awon yin lo ni olorun ami yato je o ma ba won lo o ti won se lati gba ti won ti bi won to ti wa latorun wa ti won o se ti okunkun je kon ri se latoni loruko jesus je kon bere si lo se agbara to jo pe eyan lo E mo to ju ogun eyan lo isipaya to ju ogun eyan lo loruko jesu oluwa yan da e fun won won ti gba ororo yi loni koni debi le won lori won ti gba ororo yi loni won o ni je bi olorun to ti awon eni gba ni leyin oluwa ti won leyin ma ba won lo je ki oju re ko wa lara won ogun ni fun ko yin loke orun jesu christi oluwa wa Hallelujah. We are going to hear the word of God. Now, they've received the charge. They've responded to it, received the anointing. So it's important to listen to the word of God as it will come from the servant of God, Michael Cave. I want you to know this very well. The book of Isaiah said, this same, he said it is sealed. The Bible is sealed. He said it was given to a learned person. He, read it. He said, I can't read it. How do you expect me to read it? It is sealed. He gave it to an illiterate. He said, how can I read? I am an illiterate because it is sealed. But the Holy Spirit, he breaks the seal and gives you revelation. So as you're about to listen to the word of God, I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to prepare your heart so that as the word comes, the Holy Spirit will give it appropriate revelation that will make you to make maximum use as the message as they come. I want to humbly request uh, Minister of God, Michael Cave to come over and share the word of God as the Holy Spirit gives it the leading. Praise the Lord. Thank you, my brother. I'll hold it for you. Thank you, Pastor Henry. The presence of the Lord is so strong and so real here today. What a joy and honor for us to be with you as we celebrate the faithfulness of our God. Amen. Today, I am a white American on the outside. But on the inside, I think I'm now Nigerian. <laughs> Will you bring me into your family? <laughs> Amen. What a joy and what a delight to be with you today. Our hearts rejoice with you at this time of celebrating and seeing the wonderful work that God has done and is doing among your precious people. And we celebrate this day of God's choosing. Harvest Point Ministries is uh, well-established 
in the heart of God and the heart of the nations. And we just want to come today to come alongside and rejoice with you and acknowledge what God has done. I have material here that I could probably preach until about three or four this afternoon. If you have other plans, you may want to leave now. That's a little humor. Uh, very little humor, I, I suspect, but uh, we enjoy being with you. What a wonderful heritage you have. Today, I want to bring a message, uh, and there's probably an outline in your uh, information there. You can make notes as the Lord would direct you. But I want to be speaking to you today on principles of God's leadership. It has to do with understanding the call of God. Now, I would like to tell you that you will never have any more problems now that you have received this commissioning and this ordination. I'd like to tell you that you will never face opposition or difficulty in ministry. You'll never one time have to deal with any adversity. I would like to tell you that today, but it would not be true. It's not if problems come, but it's when problems come. But God has been preparing you for just such a time as this. And we rejoice with you, and we want to stand alongside you in what God has called you to do. So some of the principles of God's leadership have to do with understanding his call upon our life. I want you to turn your Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 16, excuse me, 1 Samuel chapter 16, a very familiar passage of Scripture. This is what, in my heart, represents a heartbeat kind of message. What do I mean by a heartbeat type of message? It's a message that speaks to the way God deals with his people, all of his people, but especially spiritual leaders and those who have responded to the call of God upon their life. It's the way he leads us on our journey of faith. And I want to suggest to you that it is not something you can avoid. It is not something that you can sidestep nor escape. It will be likely the way he deals with all of us in his dealings on our journey with him, especially in full-time Christian service. I want to talk to you, first of all, about the anointing of God. What is the anointing of God? In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse the entire chapter is where you know the prophet Samuel is coming to anoint a king. He asked Jesse to have his sons come forth, and they come one by one. And that's that very familiar passage of Scripture where the Lord says to Samuel, you know, I have rejected him. He was the oldest. He was the firstborn. He would be the natural selection for God's call. But the Lord said, no, man looks on the outward appearance, but I look on the heart. God has been preparing each one of you candidates today for just this day. He has been working in you, and the call of God has been appointed to you. It's his call. It's his choosing. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 11, it starts this way. And Samuel said unto Jesse, are these all thy children? They had all walked by, and God it says, this is not the one. No, I have not selected him. No, I have not choosing this one. And Samuel was concerned. He says, well, you know, Lord, you've called me to come and anoint the new king and the director for, the, for this nation. Are these all your children? And Jesse said, well, there's yet one. He's the youngest. He's out uh, tending to the sheep. What an interesting place to find a shepherd, out tending sheep. Those who we often look at with disdain and question marks are often God's choice because he's going to receive glory, not them. He says, well, he's the one out keeping the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, send and fetch him. Now, fetch him is an old English expression. It sounds like somebody in the country out in the, the side uh, tribal area, but it was a very clear word. Go and fetch him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. And he sent and brought him in, verse 12, and he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him. Here's the word, for this is he. This is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. 
And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. The call of God, the choosing of God is at his beckoning. It's as he has willed and chosen. It is a divine placement. It is not something that man can do. It is God pointing his finger at you and saying, I have chosen you, ma'am. I have selected you, ma'am. I have selected you, sir, for the work that I've ordained and appointed for you. It is not something that we can do. 23 times throughout the New Testament, the expression is whosoever will. We hear that all through the scriptures. Whosoever will may come. Someone referred to Jesus twice saying, many are called but few were chosen. What does that mean? For my understanding, and I will submit this to you for your consideration, for many are called refers to the invitation. God is inviting all who will to respond to his call. Not everyone will respond to that call, but you, because of God's sovereign grace, have responded to that call, that invitation, and God says, then I select you. Many are called, but few are chosen. Today, God is pointing his finger of anointing at you and saying, this is her. This is him. This is the one that I am choosing at my bidding. Go fetch them. And you have come today in that response. So the anointing of God is his call. It's his choosing. It's his invitation. And it's our response to him. Every believer is called and consecrated. Every believer is called and consecrated. We're called to the Good Commission, the Great Commission. All of us are called to take the gospel. All of us are called to care for the homeless and the orphans and the widows. All of us are called to pray for those who are in authority in our government and our leadership. But not all are called to the assignment of taking his word and his anointing and his ministry to those in need. So while that is a part of it, we're all called. Not every believer has the same type of calling. We read about that in Ephesians 4, where there are some called to be apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers and evangelists. You have heard the call and you've responded. That is the anointing of God. It's not something you can choose of your own doing. Now, here's where many people get sidetracked. They think, well, I have arrived. I'm now chosen. I can do anything I want to do. But now I submit to you begins the agony of God. What do you mean the agony? God many times puts the press and the heat of life upon us to cause us to be conditioned. There are conflicts. There is the agonizing struggle of learning to die to ourself and, and submit ourselves to the will and the purpose and the calling of God. And often it is the pressure that God applies to us. Now that flies in the face of some teaching in the body of Christ today. It's that thing I started with saying, I would like to tell you that there'll be no more problems. Everything will be wonderful because now you're a Christian and you're going to always be blessed going in and coming out. And while I believe in the, the blessing and the call of, of God upon us, there's that time when God says, I'm going to apply the heat. I'm going to apply the pleasure to conform you to the image of my dear son. Part of this pressure is seen Way back in the Old Testament, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verses 1 and verse 2, this is where God says, this is the reason that I've placed you in the wilderness. Did you hear that? God says, I have placed you in the wilderness. I have placed you in this time of testing. Why? Because God's angry with us? Because God is against us? Not at all. God is saying three things. He says, I have placed you in this wilderness. I put the pressure upon you for this reason that I could humble you, that I could then prove you, and then show you your heart. These are the three things that come to us in the time of testing. God is saying, I'm going to humble you. What happens when we're humbled? We receive grace from God. What happens when we are being proved? The real character of Christ is being formed in us, and we become more like our master and our savior. And he's showing us our heart. God knows your heart. You understand that, correct? God knows our heart. Occasionally, I'll meet people. And they say, well, you know, God knows my heart, so I'm not worried about it. That's what concerns me. Jeremiah said, the heart is deceitful. 
It's wicked. Who can know it? We cannot know it. Only the Holy Spirit can reveal the places, the refining, and the pressure, and the agony that God says, I will use this to make you more like my son. We're conformed to the image of Jesus, that he might present us perfect in Christ Jesus, Paul wrote in Colossians 1, 28. So in Ephesians 1, it says that he has chosen us in the fullness of times. And a part of that fullness of times is where God is saying, I am applying the heat to your life. It will not always be comfortable. There will often be difficulties. There will be stress and and difficulties in life that we must face. But it's where God says, you're going to go through these crisis times. In the New Testament, the word time is used in two ways. There's the chronos, the minutes, the seconds, the days, the hours, the months, the years. It's a chronological testing of, t- of time that goes by. But there's also a word that's used, kairos. The kairos is co- referred to as a finding time. It's where God says, I'm going to help you find what's really in your heart. So God can surface that stuff. The heat can remove the dross like silver being refined to make us more like Jesus. You signed up for that, didn't you? Yes. To be more like Jesus? It will be costly. It is not a simple step. It is a demanding step. It is the agony that God brings to purify us and to make us more like him. It's the refiner's fire that we go through. God used that in Abraham's life. He used it in Daniel's life. He used it in Joseph's life. He used it in King David's life. David went through the heat. With all the blessing of God upon him, he still went through that. What was God doing? What does God use the pressures of life for, especially for those of you who are going into the call and the ministry that's set before you? He is going to correct faithlessness in our heart. He's looking for faithful stewards and servants of his grace. He is correcting the failure. Peter was a perfect example of that. He failed repeatedly his impetuousness, his, his willingness to jump into the boat, out of the boat, but he always was pushing the envelope. And God says, I'm going to correct that tendency in you to fail in David and Abraham, Peter, others. Now, don't confuse these crisis times that come, these kairos times. Don't confuse them with the enemy's attack. Satan is a, ve- a very real foe. He comes in warfare, but we need a discerning heart that only the Holy Spirit can bring to know when God is allowing something to come into our life to refine us, to correct us, to purify us, to make us more like Jesus. And when Satan is coming, and we need to learn how to stand in those two situations. So there is the divine placement. That is the anointing that comes of God. You cannot manufacture it. You cannot choose it yourself. He points his finger and says, I am choosing you. Just like he told Samuel, this is he. Then there's that agony that comes from God. That is the press. That is where God is purifying us. He's making us to be more like his dear son. But the exciting part is that other part there, the appointing by God. That's where God says, I am commissioning you. I am crowning you with this assignment to bring glory to me. It's that divine promotion. Today, God has affirmed his placement upon you in the call of God. Don't be surprised then when the heat comes and the pressure comes in your calling. But be prepared. There will always come that time when God says, you have been found faithful. Well done. Enter in to the glories prepared. And that's the promotion that comes from the Lord. Now, I would like to tell you that once you go through this time of pressure, one time, that'll be it. I would like to tell you that, but then I would be misleading you, wouldn't I? Because it's an ongoing process. You know, probably you are either just now entering into a crisis time in your proving ground, or you're right in the middle of one of those times, or you're just coming out of one. And the good news and the bad news is you're coming out of one get ready, catch your breath, there very likely will be another one. It's part of the process. But understanding the call of God is that you 
are no more special than anyone else in this room, but you have a responsibility, and he is choosing you, and he will grace you. He will give you all that's necessary. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. As Pastor Rick said, no one can give you a ministry. Commission Ministers Network cannot give you a ministry. Harvest Point Ministries cannot give you a ministry. Only Jesus, the head of the church, can give you that divine assignment from him. And only his Holy Spirit can equip you, empower you, and enable you to complete that assignment. That is good news in troubled times. So understanding the call of God is that God says, I have anointed you. My finger of anointing is pointing at you. He says, but you must be proven and come through that refined and purified. And then the commissioning, the crowning, the affirmation that God brings. What a privilege for us to be here with you and to celebrate God's evident call upon your life. Get ready for the time of testing, but get ready for the glory of the Lord showing himself strong on your behalf. So again, on behalf of Commission Ministers Network and your precious pastor and the minister that represented you other brothers and pastors and apostles who are a part of this, this mission, we say we affirm you. We stand with you. We are partners together. And besides, you've already told me I could be part of your family. You're stuck with me. God bless you. Pastor. Let's give a clap offering to Lord Jesus Christ for this powerful message. Amen. Thank you. God bless you, sir. Thank you very much. We've heard the word of God. And I want you to please listen to this for the church. The particular aspect of the message that I want you to hold on to is the fact that after feeding 5,000, the Lord Jesus Christ was to cross over to the other side and they encounter storm. The storm was not about Jesus Christ. It was not about the disciples. It was about the exploit they were going to uh, do. It was because of the madman of Gadara who was going to experience healing. Deposited inside him was the gift of, of an evangelist, but he was a madman. And the enemy saw that there was going to be a reconciliation. The man was going to be reconciled with his destiny and storm arose. So watch and expect it. But whenever it comes, have the consciousness that Christ is there with you. The consciousness of his presence is sufficient for you. Now, please listen to this ordinance. We charge you before God and these people that you keep faithfully the covenant now entered into between you and the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who called you that you preach the word, be constant in season and out of season, that you feed the flock of God, that you abstain from appearance of evil and every unscriptural practice as contained in the word of God, particularly in this part of the world. The, the part of the world we are, is a world where you are almost paid to commit sin. Uh, the, the environment is enabling. But here, the word of God, the warning to you as ministers is that you abstain from all appearance of evil and all unscriptural practice as contained in the word of God, even if it is politically correct. As long as it's not in line with the Bible, please let's abstain from it totally that you live a blameless life, 
the husband of one wife and a wife of one husband, giving yourself to hospitality and apt to teach. Do not give yourself to wine. Do not be a striker or a greedy filter looker or a brawler or covetous, but be patient and be one who rules well his or her home, having his or her children in subjection under the doctrine of the scriptures. By doing that, you may know how to rule the church of God. Charity begins at home, that you seek to uphold all decisions of the council of the church, which you are serving, for the guardian's safety and future of the church. Thank God most of you, all of you belong to various churches. Please let us submit ourselves to the authority of our churches. Um, prevent and honor all men for when you share, when you shall appear before God, that you may give a good account of yourself, how well you have used the, this office, wherein you have been consecrated and that you may earn for yourself a good reward. I always say that the most important title to any, any child of God who aspire to attain is not evangelist, it's not bishop, it's not general overseer, it's servant. Because that is the only title that will earn you welcome in heaven. He said, welcome, good and faithful servant, not bishop. Amen. So we've had the word of God, we've had the church. And <clears throat> once again, I want you to respond to this church because you are now ministers, you are now evangelists. The church is you must be apt to teach the word of God. You must be ready to live blameless life. I always say that we may not be able to isolate ourselves, but we can insulate ourselves. We are in the world, we are not of the world. Amen. So we want to rise to your feet now and respond. We the rest the, the, the candidate will respond, not individually. Now you do it generally to say you are ready to carry out this responsibility. So may God help you. Let's do that uh, uh, together. That you are ready to carry out this responsibility. So God help me. Thank you. God bless you. So uh, you've heard the word of God. We've heard the church. We now want to give you Bible as a mark of sealing today's program. You uh, will request the apostle to come. He will mention the names as stated. As you hear your name, you come and collect the Bible. It's a gift from myself. Mr. Grace Van Bosche. Evangelist Molara Dewumi. Evangelist Beatrice Babalola. Minister Adeyemi Yusuf. Minister Emmanuel O. Ajayi. Minister Solomon Adebayo.
Minister Adikemi E. Komolafe. Minister Folasheun Ajay. Folasheun Ajay. Minister Simisade A. Abiola. Evangelist Atonia Fabi. Evangelist Yemisi Kolawole. Evangelist Nasi Akito. Minister Onichepo Adibayo. Evangelist Cecilia Okun Adi. Evangelist Clara A. Odeneye. Evangelist Deborah Alofe. Minister Ulusola Odekunle. Evangelist Stella B. Faleye. Minister Ebenisa Olani Pekun. Pastor Timothy O. Awe. Apostle Henry Odeneye. Praise the Lord. Okay, everyone needs to be a good one. Mommy, I'm going to go. Hallelujah. We thank God for what the Lord has done. Uh, one more. I'm going to show that one. We even thank, we want to thank Mama Akito, who took the trouble. She brought it from Nigeria, brought those things from Nigeria. It's heavy enough to, I don't know, I'm sure she must have paid ex for excess luggage. God bless you, ma. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. We're going to start with ministers they will come out you get here your name come out and you receive your a certificate and your id please if you find any uh, error in the spelling of your name don't worry i'll sort it out you get it back within seven days i'm sure i'll work with him and with my sister in the office we'll get it out praise the lord so as you hear your name you come collect it and then uh, he, uh, we will request that uh, Mr. Cave gives us, he came from his office, 
It's not harvest point ministry, so he's the one to give it up. A apostle will call your name and you collect your certificate from him. Emmanuel Ajayi. Solomon Adebayo. Ade wumi ade ne kwe kon. Ade nou si komo la fe. Moro un folua ajayi. Titi la yo afolabi. Grace Bamboshe. Adeyemi Yusuf. Uluwa Damelari Faremi. Bami Dele Odekunle. Richard Komolafe. Richard Komolafe. Ministers, it. Okay. All the ministers, please come forward for prayer. Simisadi Adewi Abiola All the ministers to come forward for prayer. Please come forward, all the ministers. All right. Our Father, we just come before you now and thank you for each of these and the call upon their lives and the response to that call upon their lives, Lord God. Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have of representing you. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege we have right now of proclaiming what you have already done. And God, it's your work, and we are simply acknowledging what you have done in each of these lives here the preparations that they have made for this ministry. And Father, that, that you now have got a plan and a purpose that you are leading them into. It's a plan and a purpose that is a good plan. You know the plans you have for them, and they are good plans, Lord, and you are going to use them to touch, Lord God, the nations, to touch this world, to touch this city. And Lord God, you're going to accomplish things that are far beyond what we can imagine because it is you that is going to receive all the glory and all the honor. 
from everything that you do through their lives. From this day forward, Father, we just commit them to your care and to your keeping. And Father, may you accomplish your good purpose. We speak your blessing into them, Lord. We speak the power and a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit into them from this day forward, Father. May they live in a way that God just brings honor to you and a smile to your face each and every day of their lives. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to call for a position of evangelism. We call our mother, uh, Mother Clara Odeneye. Ola Nike Ukumadi. Omolara Adewumi Osede Faleye Antonia FAB Abimbola Alofe Yemisi Kola Wole Beatrice Babalola Nancy Adeyinka Akito Mada Adeola Gadji. Uh, are we going to call to the position? Okay, lo, let all the evangelists come out for prayer first. As you're coming, I think you need to know that every morning, Monday through Friday, we gather in our offices to pray for you by name, not just, not just God bless them all wherever they may be, but by name. And I have to admit that many times when we're praying for the African names, we probably don't get them right. Sometimes we just feel like we're speaking in tongues. We just whatever, you know, so God, you know how to say that name right. But now that we've been here, I'm going to expect Pastor Mike to say every one of your names correctly. You right. <laughs> After all, he is part of the family now, right? So he he's got Nigeria in his blood, you know, so he could. So, but we do want you to know we do pray for you by name specifically, and your names will come up as we pray for you now, uh, because we do feel like this is a connection. This is a part of a family. We are all just the family of God, and uh, so we are, we're honored to be here. And and um, let me just pray for you right now <clears throat> as the evangelists, the ones that reach out and. And, and touch. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for these that 
since that call, Lord, in your scripture in Ephesians, it talks about those who have been called. It talks about the gift of the apostle, talks about the gift of the prophet, talks about the gift of the evangelist and the pastor and the teacher. And Lord, we pray for these now who sense that calling of evangelism, Lord, to represent you to a lost world. God, we are facing a world that is getting, seems to be getting darker and darker every day, slipping more and more into hopelessness. But Lord, we understand that these who are going forth is your voice to proclaim hope to the nations, hope to this city, hope to their neighbors, hope to their neighborhoods, Lord God. We just thank you, Father, for giving them the words. And Father, the evangelists in the New Testament went forward not just with words of wisdom, but words of power, Lord, and by demonstrations of power. So Lord, we ask for more than just words to come forth from Lord, but we ask for there to be demonstrations of the power of the Holy Spirit to see lives changed, to see eternal destinies changed, to see, Father, um, those who would, who would, who you have called, God, to just fall down as the word goes forward, Lord. We just pray that you would use them as instruments to mightily proclaim your word to the lost and to those, Lord, who are wandering, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the shepherd that goes after the sheep. We thank you, Lord, for these evangelists now who are going to proclaim your word with power and see your word accomplish that for which it is sent. In the holy name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, we praise you and bless you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, before we call this last person here, we ask all the pastors in the house to please come forward. Uh, Pastor Ladi Joye, uh, Pastor Awolowo, Pastor Oye Demi, please come forward. Uh, because uh, since the last person is going to be a pastor, uh, he has to come forward when you wanted to honor a, a colonel to the a lieutenant colonel to the position of a colonel. They will ask all the guards to start to decorate that person. That means they want to, to, to understand that it's coming in to meet some of his uh, people who has been in that position. With that, we called on uh, Pastor Uluwa Sheung Awe. After you take your picture, you will go to the all the minister, they will speak the word of God to your life. Now you go to Baba. Now we will ask you to kneel down here and the president will pray. Well, as has been said already, the greatest call in the kingdom of God is to be a servant. So I'm just gonna kneel as I pray for our brother here as well, Lord God. We thank you, Father. For the calling of your pastors, Lord God, we thank you, Father, for your spirit upon this man, Lord. And Father, we thank you that you are going to use him, Lord, as a shepherd to lead and guide your people into truth and into word and into your word. And Father, we just pray, Father, right now that you would give him insight into your word and insight into your heart greater than he has ever experienced before, Father. May you just open his eyes to see what you have for him. May you open his ears to hear from you, Lord. And may God, may you loose his tongue to speak clearly and with pro power and with accuracy, Lord, your word. Father, for your word that goes forth from him, may it accomplish that for which it's sent. We speak your blessing into him now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit. We send him to declare your word and represent you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shepherd, shepherd the sheep, feed the flock.
In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. This is indeed a great day. Uh, the next ordination is going to come up very, very soon because I see evangelists becoming pastors. Yeah. Hallelujah. I want to be part of their success story. So I will hasten their promotion. They, it, what it takes to be a pastor is for one to have a, a, fo a, a fold of sheep. You, an evangelist is out to gather. Pastors are there to grow. Apostolic, apostles are there to guard. Guide us from falling off from doctrine. Prophets are there to give us spiritual guidance. So evangelists, if you start a house fellowship and you have 12 people in your fellowship, invite me. I'll join you to nurture them. By the time they become a full-fledged uh, cell group, and you can run the cell group in such a way that you nurture them to get to a point of recognition, then we can ordain you as a pastor. But uh, how can we ordain you a pastor when you don't even have one ship to pastor over? So uh, I look forward to ordaining pastors or inviting the commission to ordain pastors. I want to introduce you to the commission. Therefore, I want to invite Pastor Cave to introduce the commission, introduce the president and his wife, so that those churches represented here, you collect their information. You can also set up an occasion like this for them to come and ordain your ministers. The conditions are spelled out very easy. As long as they meet the conditions, Number one, the calling must be true. God call first, and then they will ordain and commission. Number one is the call. That's important. So I want to invite him to tell those who are ministers here who have their ministries. You can register your ministry with them. They help with fundraising. As long as you meet all the conditions, they can help you to raise funds to meet the demands of your ministry. I'm telling you this because this, the, the information are there on the internet. But I, I can attest to the fact that this is a commission that is valid, genuine. There are a lot of them on the internet there that are not safe. But I can assure you, I promise you, they are safe to deal with and you'll be okay with them. So, Mr. Cave, to introduce the commission. Thank you, Pastor Henry. God put in the heart of our founding uh, and our president, Rick Mom, uh, this ministry some almost 20 years ago, I think. Uh, but in recent years, God has, it's just been God's time. And today we have uh, grown by the Lord's gracing to over 500 uh, ministers, pastors, evangelists, church planters, now in 70 nations around the world. To God be the glory. When I walked in here today, I was fighting back the tears as I looked at your precious faces. And Lord, these are trophies of your grace. You have redeemed some. And one day, some from every tongue, from every tribe, from every nation, we will stand and cast our crowns and gratitude to the Lord Jesus for all he has done for us. We are privileged to be able to be servants to those who God has identified with us. If you are interested in more of that, uh, our, our website is uh, cmnetwork.org. You can find it on there, but we are an established ministry. Pastor Rick and Jana, we're out of the same home church in Corpus Christi. We grew up in the same church. Well, Rick came in later. He was in the military, and I'd gone off to Bible college, but our families have known each other for many, many years, and we're still friends. That tells you something right there, the faithfulness of God. And so uh, I, I'm acknowledging uh, Rick and Jana, mom, who have a great heart. We also have another missions agency called Commission to Every Nation, C-T-E-N, C-10, which we have, uh, they're all U.S. citizens, but CMN is uniquely 
um, facilitating in such a way that we can take national workers in many, many countries. Again, we have over 70 nations represented, all to the glory of God. And so if we can serve you in any way, we stand ready to help you fulfill your calling. We can also credit, we, if you have donors who are supporting your ministry or your calling, uh, we will properly vet that. And uh, we checked out Pastor Henry and found out he was good. And besides, my mother's given name, first name was Clara. So she's already thumbs up with me. We're honored to have every one of you. And I'm going to work on pronouncing your names. And if Pastor uh, Henry will invite me back sometime, I come, I'll, I'll try to say your names correctly. God bless you, Peter Pastor. Hallelujah. Thank you. Before we invite a representative of the candidates to say the vote of thanks and we say the grace, we want to, to a, a day will be set out for Thanksgiving. So uh, they will come, dance, celebrate their uh, titles in the presence of the Lord. Um, but we want you to carefully watch this clip uh, to introduce you to some of our activities. This is only four minutes. Some of our activities in Africa. And we're going to Africa in March by the grace of God. Harvest Point School of Ministry, Houston, Texas, USA, brings good news to the body of Christ in Nigeria and Africa. In March 2022, we are coming to Nigeria for partnership with ministries and churches to break the barrier of language so you can start a Bible school. In March 2022, our Lord commanded the 12 disciples to make disciples of all nations. The five-fold ministries do for the edification of the church, the body of Christ in Nigeria and Africa, with over 650 million people, needs to bridge the gap of strengthening believers to become disciples, which means many church workers cannot proceed to Bible school due to language barriers. Harvest Point School of Ministry Satellite Campus Outreach is coming with an international curriculum and fully developed multimedia content in English, Yoruba, and major African languages. In partnership with seminaries and universities in America, Harvest Point School of Ministry will feature leading ministers of God like Rena Bonte, Joyce Mayer, T.L. Osborne, and many others to deliver spirit-filled, inspired lectures. Churches and ministries come meet Harvest Point School of Ministry in Nigeria in the month of March 2022. Call plus 1713-231-3278 or email henryodenaye at yahoo.com. Start your Bible school in an indigenous language and our graduates will get an internationally recognized degree from the United States of America. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. So ministers, get yourself ready. You're going to be part of the team next year. Uh, it's going to uh, one you either send or you are sent, or you disobey. You either send by sponsoring, or you are sent, or you disobey. So if you are not sent, that is if you are not going to represent, and you are not sponsoring anybody, then you belong to the class of the disobedient. Hallelujah. So identify yourself. Amen. Vote of thanks. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You want to join me to sing this song? It's a beautiful day, nice day, and glorious day. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son who yielded his life and atonement for sin and opens the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. 
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let our people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus, the Son, and give him the glory. Great things he has done. Let's be seated. Praise the Lord. Indeed, he has done great things. Calling us from uttermost darkness to the marvelous light of God. The uh, their father said many were called, but few were chosen. That had chose some of us today to be called to the offices as we've witnessed it, it's by his grace, and we not taking it for granted. We thank him and return all glory back to him. We bless his name for sparing our lives. Like he told the man of God that ever before you have formed in the belly of your mother, I have known you. He knew us, he knows us, and he knows what he's preparing us for, which is actually manifesting even from today. Glory be to the name of the Lord. I want to thank him as well for bringing our dear uh, ministers, fathers, mothers, all the way from Corpus Christi, if I may remember, right, like he said, or from where, you know, from out of town to this place today, despite the weather storm that has started about two days ago, uh, on the way to San Antonio, further than to Cincinnati, all the way I-10, all the way across, there were lots of uh, um, icy roads, there were lots of snows and all of that. But in all of these things, so those who even uh, had to fly, they had trouble, they have problems, even in the, in the, in the, in the, in the sky. And uh, in all of these things, we are more than victorious, conquerors, through him who has loved us. The Lord brought them here, safe and sound. We thank Almighty God for doing this and many more that we do. And we want to welcome and thank them for coming on behalf of myself and the our colleagues, I want to thank you, Pastor Cave and the president and the wife. And we pray that Almighty God will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. He who has called you and commissioned you to this greater job here below, he will see you through and he will equip you with all the way with us and you will finish strong. And at the end of your race here on earth, you will reign. All of us will reign with him in his kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you very much, sirs. Thank you very much, ma'am. I want to thank our father, the president of Harvest Point Ministry, our leader here, our father, Pastor Henry, Apostle Henry Odenaye, and their wife is our father and she's our mother. And we thank them for this gracious opportunity they have extended to us today. We pray, Almighty God, we're going to strengthen you, sir, and ma'am, in the name of Jesus Christ. The ministry God has commissioned to you, the Lord will see you through. You will finish strong in the name of Jesus. I want to thank all the members, the invited guests, their fathers, Pastor uh, Oladunji and Apostle Keshiro, and all the ministers of God that are here, Pastor uh, Awulowo, Pastor Oyedemi, and all fellow ministers, elders, deacons, deaconesses, church officers, and all family members and church members that are here today, friends from all over that are watching, families that are watching from out of country and wherever we may be, we want to thank you all for granting us that grace through the Lord Jesus Christ to spare your time and facilitate with us today and be part of this great occasion. It's a memorable day in our lives. The uh, ordinance, right? It's a memorable day in our lives. And we thank you all for being part of that day and making it a success. And we pray that Almighty God will come to bless every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, one. Thank you all. God bless you. Great things he had taught us. Great things he had done. And great 
Ninu Omore. Yo ya wale nungba tabari jesu. Yo luwa, yo luwa, finyifu o luwa. Yo luwa, yo luwa, e yo ni wajure kato. Baba wa lo loru ko Jesu Jeka jo fo go fu O ni she ya nu Amen We are already celebrating heaven on earth <laughs> Hallelujah Let's rise to our feet And I invite the president to say the grace, the benediction, benediction. Lord, again, we just come to you and thank you so much for the privilege of being here. And Lord, we I'm just reminded, Lord, and looking forward to that day when we gather together and in every language, folks from every tribe, every tongue, Come before your throne, and Lord, we worship together and just make a great sound of rejoicing and celebration at what you have done for us and for this world. And Lord, <clears throat> we just thank you for the taste of it we get today, just a little uh, pre-taste of what heaven is going to be like when we all gather together, Lord, from every nation, every tribe, every tongue, and declare the glory of the living God and declare you, Jesus, as King of kings and Lord of lords. Father, we thank you now for this time we've been here. And Lord, we thank you for the privilege we have of representing you to the world around us now. And as we go from here, Lord, may we remember that that is what you've called us to do, to be your ambassadors here in this nation, here on this earth. We are not of this world, but we are definitely in this world. And so, Lord, we need to go and make a difference as we go. May we be a light in dark places. May we bring hope where there is discouragement. May we bring encouragement, God, and courage where there is fear. Father, we thank you for your great power and manifest yourself through us, we pray, as your instruments here on this earth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless. Thank you. 